And I'm Holly and as you can see I already have some soap in the mold. I'm making a double batch of Mary Cranberry soap and so with that soap I have just like a layer of this red color on the bottom reddish pink and so I went ahead and did that. So I'm going to move these molds off to the side. The reason why I went ahead and did it was because I want them set up really well. So I'm going to move these to the side and I'll be right back for the batch. Okay, so here we go. The first thing is the coconut milk into the base oils. And I probably could have gotten away with using one of my plastic pitchers, but huh, completely forgot. So I'm making two slabs of soap, but I did three batches. So the first batch was split evenly between the molds over there with the red layer. And so then the rest of the soap batches is a little bit reduced. So that's why I said I probably could have put it in my plastic containers, but this will be fine. So in with the lye solution. And I'm gonna get this blended to emulsification. Get my spatula here. This helps to scrape the bottom of the container too. Keeps it all moving. Helps to scrape the bottom of the pot without making the metal on metal sound so much. I'm going to go ahead and add in the fragrance oil and this fragrance is just the most amazing cranberry and it just smells so good it is cranberry and citrus and warm woods I love it this is amazing how many different cranberries that you can get and they're all so amazing. You have regular cranberries, you have cranberry salsa, you have these like cranberry wood-like ones. Oh, they're all so good. And I do soap several at the holidays, use several of them. All right. So I'm gonna pour some off for more of the cranberry color plus a gold. I'm not quite sure how much I'm going to do. I think 2.5 liters is what I'm going to do, but we'll see. I may change my mind here in a moment. And these were the pictures that I used for the base color, so I did just clean them off if you can tell that they're not perfectly clean. They're clean, just used already. <laughs> to clarify that. Just used them a little bit ago on the same soap. Okay, into this one, I'm going to add in some titanium dioxide. And I'm going to measure it so I can do it equal between each one. I have a popsicle stick to help stir it up, and it is very annoying. Alright, so let's do. Hmm, let's just do one and see what happens. One tablespoon. Yeah, we need a little bit more. 
This is diluted with water. All right, into these pitchers, one is going to be gold. So I just have some shimmery gold mica. And then this one is a mixture of colors. I've got some Queen of Hearts. I've got some Trial by Fire. Those are from Nurture. And then I have some Merlot from Brambleberry. And we'll give those a little blend. That's looking good. Now I'm going to need my stick blender again, so I'm going to clean it off. With this one, I do an in the pot swirl. So I'm going to put gold here on this side and I'm going to scrape it all in. And then the red on this side. So before I pour it on, I'm going to give this base a little spritz of distilled water and that will help them to meld together since it has been just a little bit. I'm pouring out of this big pot and it's going to have a lot of pressure. So my goal here is to um, not let it sink, sink in. So I'm going to pour it all down here on this end at first. I don't think it's going to break through because it has been a while. So that's good. We'll do that for now. A lot of that red came out first, so I'm going to try to break it up now with some of this lighter. Oh, it's so pretty. Now, unfortunately, I have to scrape it all in. I should have made my batch a little bit bigger, and then we could have just kept this gorgeous swirl, but the rest has to go in, so we'll just do it as normal. Look how swirly that is. Isn't that pretty? Love it. Oh, I just love these colors together. So pretty. Love this soap. Seems hard to believe we're back here at Christmas already. Of course, I'm soaping this the day after Labor Day. So, we're, we gotta get that head start, you know, for me, for soap makers, but anyway, so that's why you still hear the air conditioner and everything, because we're still in summertime. So I'm just gonna smooth out this top, and this, it always ends up just kind of this swirly kind of a desserty look love it just to smooth it a bit even it out and smack it down again I'll clean off these edges here just love this process oh goodness gracious so good so pretty 
course it's going to lighten up quite a bit and this red is going to go more to a pink ultimately kind of a dark pink color so i'm going to top it with some blackberry seeds unfortunately i cannot find any cranberry seeds and i feel like i used them up last year so oops but these are going to do in a pinch they're very similar and i just put a little bit on the top these are a little bit darker the cranberry seeds went a little bit more to a red that's all right I won't tell if you won't tell. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna, I'm totally gonna tell because it's gonna be in my ingredient list. <laughs> That's gonna look weird, isn't it? Oh goodness gracious! Oh well. Oh well. They always pop off usually in the first use or so. If it even makes it that far, these little seeds and stuff they usually pop off a little bit during shipping and all the things. I just get random scents in my nose and that's just how I design scent so my blends a lot of times they just they literally just boop pop into my nose but this time Vicks VapoRub just popped into my nose and I don't know why because I haven't been thinking about it I haven't been sniffing anything similar I'm healthy so I don't know it was goofy just all of a sudden I just smelled it plain as day all right well that looks good. It's a little weird with the blackberry seeds, but we're going to be okay with it. And then I'm just going to top it with some glitter. It's mostly just kind of a white, but it has a gold shimmer to it. Whoa, it is very, very airborne. It's going everywhere. So we need that glitter on here. Yes, we do. So I am just going to do this one more time. I guess we'll try this again at a little different angle this time. Okay, so here we have both batches of Mary Cranberry soap. Looking beautiful. You can tell this one is setting up quite a bit already. And then this one is so much shinier, it's freshly made. All right, so it's been a few days and I'm gonna go ahead and split up the loaves for the Mary Cranberry soap. And I have this nice little splitter from Smith Creek Studio. I don't know that they're making them anymore, but that's what I am using. So I will go grab the slabs. This is the redder one of the two. So 
So we always take a little sliver off of the side. That's what becomes the samples. This is kind of a long process for us usually. We really do take our time, make sure we're doing a good job. And my husband does typically do this for me so I don't have to handle this heavy slab. It's looking very good. I like it. Now, the only fault I have with this soap so far is that those blackberry seeds did bleed a little bit and they bled yellow. So that's kind of irritating. I don't remember the cranberry ones doing that. And so that wasn't the best substitution ever, but it's just a little bit on the top. And it's not going to be that big of a deal. So we cut our loaves at two and a half inches. And I will have to put all of the slabs on an, or loaves on another table. I just don't have enough room for everything on this one. Oh, that is looking gorgeous. I love it. I do like the single wire cutter just because I can use the same splitter for different sizes but it would be nice to have one that would just do all the loaves at once this one has a little bit more of the gold isn't that nice so I will have 10 loaves total between the two batches This is going pretty well, but I'm usually banned from this process because I don't always get the best cut. I've been doing quite a bit better since I put down some masking tape here at this end right here so that I can line it up down here too. Because it's amazing how much these um, slabs will shift. And sometimes this end here isn't always exactly even, so it can set it off too. So I need to cut one more off of here. We're left with this thick piece. And so what I do is I cut it down. Let's see. Usually works okay. But I'm just slow and careful. And so these are some heftier samples. I usually put them in the larger orders. Let's see, I'm going to take just a little bit off of here because these are kind of crooked pieces. And then I just meant to actually bring this one in with it. So I need to cut that one. That one, yeah, I'm going to cut this one real quick like. best to put it on the back. <laughs> Let's just move on. Let's just get it done more efficiently here. Come on now. And so then we just cut these little sample pieces and everything is always just a little gunky at the beginning because it is still wet and needs to evaporate all the excess water that's what makes the soap harder over time 
And there's also just some magic that happens during cure time, especially in my opinion in the six to eight week window. It's so much nicer than a four week cure. These ones are a little bit smaller. I usually take a little off the end, but I'm not gonna worry about that today. All right, so it is time to cut the Mary Cranberry soap. It's looking delightful. Let's see. I need a wider table. There we go. So I'm going to slide it down here so I can get just a teeny tiny sliver off the end. I'll give this a cut and see what it looks like inside. Oh, that's, that's delightful. That looks really nice. <laughs> I love it. Wow, that is gorgeous. That is looking so amazing. So this one has a little bit of the side sweep action going on. Same with here. So the in loaves typically will do that. That's just how it kind of flows in and around. And then as it gets more towards the center, it usually looks a little better. I have just a lot of soap to cut. So I am just going to bop through it as fastly as I can because I have some other loaves I need to work on. It is just full steam ahead here at the Mo River Soap Studios. We are just knocking them out. It is September. We have to start fairly early for all of our holiday products. My goal is to have all holiday soaps made prior to the fall release so that they can be curing and just doing their thing. And then after the fall release, I'll focus on wax melts and scrubs and such. Let's see what this looks like. Ooh, that still looks real nice. So pretty. Whoa. This is such an amazing fragrance. I guess can't even hardly stand it. It smells so good. This is just my favorite. So some of these end cuts will be like this also, where it's just kind of layered there. And then the back, this is kind of where it was smooshing up along the side of the mold. So I am just going to continue cutting. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.